Personal Finance Presentation Equal Credit Opportunity Act, the ECOA. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Equal Credit Opportunity Act, the ECOA. The Federal Trade Commission, FTC, the nation's consumer protection agency, enforces the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, the ECOA, which prohibits credit discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, national origin, sex, marital status, age, or because you get public assistance. Now, note that in a perfect world of competition, if competition was working properly and there's going to be multiple financial institutions in place competing with each other in order to provide loans, which is the case in many areas, you would think that the financial institution would have an incentive, of course, to provide loans because that's how they're going to be making money and have equal standards that they're going to be applying across the board to see whether or not people can repay the loan so that they can pick up loans that are likely to be repaid on. And if they were to depend on factors that are outside of whether or not someone can repay the loan or not, you would think that they would lose in a competitive market because other people would pick up those individuals and be more than happy to provide loans if they were going to be repaid in on it. And that would, uh, and that would drive the people that, that uh, are not picking up the loans based on circumstances as to whether someone could repay them or not on a business setting in competition would go out of the market. But the market is not always perfect because there could be areas that uh, there isn't perfect competition and so on and so forth. One bank might have you know, a larger control over a particular region. Anytime there's centralization of power, then that centralization leads to less competition and so on and so forth. So you want to know, of course, the laws here. So Equal Credit Opportunity Act, the ECOA. Creditors may ask for most of this information in certain situations, but they may not use it when deciding whether uh, to give you credit or when setting the terms of your credit. So obviously, when you go through the application process, they may ask for some of this information uh, for whatever reason through the application process. But these are factors on which you wouldn't think that the credit should be determined in. It's illegal to be determined in. And you would also think that they're not factors that would be relevant to determine whether someone can repay the loan or not, and therefore irrelevant just from a self-interested standpoint to assess whether someone can repay a loan or not. So note, uh, everyone who applies for credit gets, gets it or gets the same terms. Factors like income, expense, debt, and credit history are among the considerations lenders use to determine your credit worthiness. So generally, you should have equal treatment under the terms. So whatever the terms of the institutions, you would think that they should apply those terms equally to everybody involved across basically these categories. And again, you would think they would have a self-interest in order to do that because those are the terms that they're looking for to see whether or not someone can repay the loan. And if someone can repay the loan, those are loans we want, we want right? Because it's a business transaction. So the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, the law provides protections when the deal with any organizations or people who regularly extend credit, uh, including banks, small loan and finance companies, retail and department stores, credit card companies, and credit unions. Everyone who participates in the decision to grant credit or in setting the terms of that credit, including real estate brokers who arrange financing, must comply with the ECOA. When you apply for credit, creditors may not. Uh, di di discourage you from applying or reject your application because of your race, color, religion, national origin, sex, marital status, age, or because you receive public assistance. Consider your race, sex, or national origin, although you may be asked to disclose this information if you want to. So note, oftentimes, they may actually be required, be required sometimes to ask for this information where you, you might say, well, why are you even asking for it? at this point because it shouldn't have anything to do with the whether or not I can repay the loan but obviously they're trying to put the statistics together uh, to do that so they may have the, the questionnaire saying asking these questions which you might consider to be irrelevant so they can put their you know grouping of people into boxes stats together and everything together and whatnot so it helps federal agencies enforce anti-discrimination laws a credit may consider your uh, immigration status and whether you have the right to stay in the country long enough to repay the debt. Now, obviously, if you're if it's an immigration status, that's completely different because that does affect whether or not you can, you can possibly repay uh, the loan or not. So you would think that that would be something 
that you know they might want to they, it, w it would be a factor whether or not you you would say they need to have the information if they could have the information on the banking side you would think it would be something that they might factor into their their questionnaire given the fact that you would think it could have an impact on whether or not someone could repay so impose different terms or, or conditions like a higher interest rate or higher fees on loan based on your race color religion national origin sex marital status age or because you receive public assistance so again the idea would be that it's uniform policy over these categories because again these categories you would think would not have an impact on whether you can repay the loan or not so so they shouldn't be factors in determining you know what the conditions of the loan will be should have equal treatment under the law or under in this case the policy so ask if you're if you're widowed or divorced a creditor may use only the terms married unmarried and separated uh, when you apply for credit uh, may not they may not ask about your marital status if you're applying for a separate unsecured account so if it's if it's a separate account you're looking for obviously if you were looking for a loan and you're filing for joint for it or something then that would be a different situation but if not then the marital status is none of their business generally so a creditor may ask you to provide this information if you live in community property states like arizona california idaho louisiana nevada new mexico uh, texas washington and wisconsin a creditor in, uh, in any state may ask for this information if you apply for a joint account or a secured by property so ask for information about your spouse except except uh, if your spouse is applying with you so obviously you know if the spouse is applying with you then their, their information is relevant if your spouse will be allowed to use the account if you are uh, relying on your spouse's income or alimony or child support income from a former spouse if you live in a community property state ask about your plan for having a or raising children but they can ask questions about expenses related to your dependents so that's a kind of sticky situation right there from a creditor standpoint, of course, because they don't want to get too involved in, in you know, how you're raising your children and whatnot. But obviously, children are an expense uh, in terms of your monthly expenses. So, so just from a financial standpoint, in terms of how much you're paying, in terms of how much you can repay the loan, you would think it could be relevant. But uh, so that's that. So ask if your alimony, child support, or separate maintenance payments, unless they tell you first that you don't have to provide this information if you aren't relying on these payments to get credit a creditor may ask if you have to pay alimony child support or separate maintenance payments okay so when deciding to grant you credit or when setting the terms of credit creditors may not consider your race color religion national origin sex marital status or whether you get public assistance uh, consider your age unless now, age, of course, is, an, is a factor that's different. I mean, age is a little bit different than these other factors. Obviously, you know, if, every, if all else is equal in terms of your credit, uh, in terms of your financial conditions, then race, color, religion, national origin, sex, marital status shouldn't really matter from a loan standpoint perspective, and you can have an equal policy. When you look at age, you know, you could, you know, it's a little bit, you got the age discrimination, but it's not exactly the same thing because we all have a limited time here on the earth and whatnot so it could you know <laughs> impact the repayment you would think it might be something that that could be more uh more in alignment so it's a little bit different of a of a thing there you would think but let's see what we have here consider your, they cannot consider your age unless you're too young to sign the contract so obviously if you can't sign the contract you can't go into a contract for a loan uh, you're at least 62 and the creditor will favor you because of your age uh, it's used to determine the meaning of, of other factors important to creditworthiness. For example, a creditor will use your age to determine if your income might drop because you're about to retire. So obviously, if you're close to retirement, then, you know, that's kind of that could have an impact on your income. <laughs> like, you know, what your whole income scenario thing is going to look like. So it's used to value credit scoring systems that favor applicants 62 and older. A credit scoring system assigns points to answers you give on credit applications. For example, your length of employment might be scored differently depending on age. So when deciding to grant you credit or when set, setting the terms of credit, creditors may not. Consider whether you have a telephone account in your name. A creditor may consider whether you have a phone. Consider the racial uh, composition of the neighborhood where you want to buy, reference, or improve a house with money 
uh, you are you are borrowing. So when evaluating your income, creditors may not uh, refuse to consider reliable public assistance income the same way as other income. Uh, so, re- so in other words, if you're looking for reliable income and, and the income is reliable, even though it's from public assistance, then if it's reliable, then it would be a reliable source of income. And you would think it would be part of the same kind of calculations when they've got your income versus expense and whether you can pay back type of calculations. Discuss income because of your sex or marital status. For example, a creditor cannot count a man's salary as 100% and a woman's at 75%. A creditor may not assume a woman of childbearing age will, will stop working to raise children. Now, and again, that that's one that... <laughs> You could see the bank, you know, just from a statistical standpoint, might, you know, if just in terms of age, you would think that at a marital stage that a certain amount of women would have children, which could have an impact on earnings. But you can't can't consider that. And so that's interesting. So discuss or refuse to consider income because it comes from part time employment, Social Security, pension or annuities. Refuse to consider reliable alimony, child support or separate maintenance payments, a creditor may ask you for proof that you receive this income consistently. So uh, you also have the right to have credit in your birth name, uh, your first and your spouse's last name, or your first name and combined last name. Uh, get credit without a cosigner if you meet the creditor's standards. Have a cosigner other than your spouse if one is necessary. Keep your own accounts after you change your name, marital status, reach a certain age, or retire unless the creditor has evidence that the, that you are not willing or able to pay. Know whether your application was accepted or rejected within 30 days of filing a complete application. You also have the right to know why your application was rejected. So if they do reject your application, then of course you want to know why and you want to be able to look at, and then then you can kind of review these factors and say, hey, is there is there something funny here going on that they rejected it? And like I say, if you had other financial institutions in the area that, that are competing with that financial institution in a similar market, you would think you can go to the other other application, you can determine quite quickly whether or not they're not applying the same standards possibly uh, and, and try to see you know what the differences are. But of course, if you're in a situation where you know one institution poss- you know ha- is, is dominating the whole kind of area there and you don't have any other options, that's when these kind of corrupt things are more likely to happen due to the fact that competition doesn't drive people to be you know doing, doing things in a competitive fashion anymore and taking on the loans that people can repay back. So in any case, the creditor must tell you the, the specific reasons for the rejection or that you were entitled to learn the reasons if you ask within 60 days. An acceptable reason might be your income was too low or you haven't been employed long enough. An unacceptable reason might be you don't meet your minimum standards. You don't meet our minimum standards. That information is not specific enough. So it's just like if someone was to tell you, you know, it's basically said, you know, why, why did you do this? And, and, or why is this the way it is? And the other person says, because I said so, well, then that's not, you know, <laughs> okay. You know, that's not very, that's not very informative. I don't, I can't go based on that. That's not an objective type of decision. If they give you something that's objective, they say, Hey, look, your income's too low. You, we got this credit problem. That's the problem right there. I've compared, you know, it's, I apply the same standard to everybody and that is the thing that's drawn me under. If you improve that thing, then you can come and, and we'd be more likely to do it. If they just say, because I said so, well then, you know, that's that's not a reason that I can improve or anything. So that's so learn the specific reason you were you were offered less favorable terms than you applied for, but only if you reject these terms. For example, if the lender offers you a, a smaller loan or a higher interest rate, uh, you don't accept the offer, you have the right to know why those terms were offered. So find out why your account was closed or why the terms of the account were made less favorable unless the account was inactive or you failed to make payments as agreed. 